Welcome, welcome to Peace Lutheran Church. This, um, our service this morning is a Lutheran service that's combined with the Hermiston and the Pendleton United Methodist service. Um, I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you're all doing well this morning. It's such a beautiful, beautiful spring day. Happy Mother's Day to um, all of you out there. I want to share something with you just for a minute before we start the service today. Um, today is Mother's Day. And maybe it feels a, a little bit off. Um, maybe a little non-traditional, if you will. Just think about it. You know, there won't be any special dinners out this afternoon that will include tables full of friends and family who have gathered to celebrate. And remember that luxurious spa gift certificate someone gave you last year? Well, that's probably not going to happen either. And what I probably will miss the most are those little corsages or that single red rose that, that moms and grandmas and everybody get to have as they enter church on Sunday morning. I know it's hard. And I know that today our world is tilted on its axis. And so we find ourselves maybe, maybe reevaluating what really counts. To mother, to practice mothering, to be a motherer. That's what counts. That you reach as writer Anne Lamott said, a level of love and self-satisfaction. And to do that, to practice mothering, to be a motherer, you don't have to be a traditional mom. You can be a, gra a grandma. You can be a great grandma, like I am. Or an aunt, or a cousin, or a teacher, or a friend of a friend of a friend. Many of us have experienced the love of one or more of these moms as we have gone through our own lives. And let's not forget all of the people who have stepped up to become foster parents or adopting parents. And what about the siblings that we grew up with that were always there for us at every turn through thick and thin? The list is long, really long. But know this, if you have lent a hand, fixed a meal, Listen to a youngster pour his or her heart out. Help a brand new mama with that new baby. If you have opened your home to, to a houseless teen or bought a bus ticket for a kid that just wants to go home, if you have talked a young person down off the ledge or pulled them off that narrow bridge, or if you if you have kept homemade chocolate chip cookies in your freezer and you don't mind if the whole neighborhood knows and shows up to share them, then you are indeed a motherer, a nurturer of the highest order. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia! Let's sing together our gathering hymn, hymn 785. <laughs>
the grace of our Lord and Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence the things that do not exist. Amen. Amen. If you were to keep watch over our sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness, and so we confess. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life. We have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God. Give us new hearts and right spirits, that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the free and abounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's sing together our Kyrie. Regina, thank you. Together, let us pray. Holy Lord, within your church, your followers have often allowed their disagreements to get in the way of being faithful to your word. Remove any barriers our communities face that prevent us from sharing your word and building up your church. Amen. 
Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 18. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together. By, by trade, they were tent makers. Every Sabbath, he would argue in the synagogue and would try to convince Jews and Greeks. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let's please rise and sing our gospel acclamation together. According to 1 Corinthians. Glory to you, O Lord. Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you be in agreement, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be united in the same mind and purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanas. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolish to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. You know, this reading, this reading reminds me so much of a telephone call that, that I received at home one day not long after all this virus thing started up. And the caller began the conversation by asking if I believed in the First Amendment, you know, the First Amendment of the Constitution. Of course, I said, I'm a pastor. I'm passionate about religious freedom. And he went on to say, then why are you allowing your church to take away your rights? I finally got what he was getting at, and I assured him that, that I would rather be safe than sorry when it came to the well-being of my congregation. You know, church families not meeting together in a sanctuary on Sunday morning, well, that just seemed like such a small price to pay to protect them. But I tried to be cool. I did it. I tried to be calm. I wasn't like doing my usual stomping around with the phone. I'm trying all the breathing techniques that I have been learning lately. But then what does he do? He suggests that I don't have enough faith in God. Because he said if I had real faith, I would trust God to care for and to keep my flock safe. So admittedly, it went downhill from there. And since that time, all those weeks ago, I have had and heard several conversations similar to this one. On Saturday, I went to pick up some gardening supplies 
And I watched and I listened because you couldn't help but listen. I listened to a man just loudly haranguing this young cashier about the people in the store who were wearing masks. And this person went on about how it wasn't necessary and how it was all so crazy. And as I was standing there looking at some stuff to buy, I was holding my breath, hoping, hoping against hope that the, quote, lack of faith card wouldn't be played before he was finished talking. Because I knew that I probably wouldn't stand still if that happened. I felt so sorry for that cashier. She looked so mortified. So I share this with you today, not because I want to stir up a bunch of political stuff. I share it with you because it illustrates how Christianity, even in its loosest form, finds itself tattered, or maybe worse. In these, what we might call dark and foreboding times. Really, when you think about it, if you go back and you read the gospel reading from today, how much different are we today than they were all those years ago in Corinth? Listen, if you will, to these words from John Wesley, who founded the Methodist Church. And he's talking about the scripture reading about the church at Corinth. And this is what he said. Not only schisms and heresies, animosities, fierce and bitter contentions were among them, but open, actual sins. Yet, quote, such fornication as was not named among the heathens. That's from 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. Nay, there was need to remind them that neither adulterers nor thieves nor drunkards could enter into the king of, uh, kingdom of heaven. I'm going to go back and read the very first words that he said. Not only schisms and heresies, animosities, fierce and bitter contentions were among them. Does that sound familiar? It just leaves me sad. It leaves me sad that, that our belief system has in some ways become a muddled mess in all this. Because like the scriptures, the basis is a combination of, of religion and politics and wealth and power and poverty and hate. That's what's causing all of these heartbreaking fractures that we are seeing. If you listen closely to what people are saying, you hear it. Friends finding themselves pitted against friends, neighbors against neighbors, and even families finding themselves at odds with one another over their beliefs. Wesley called the divisions among those in Corinth an alienation of affection from one another. And the sad thing is, that we expect the unexpected in a time where there is so much possibility. How can we expect the unchurched to look to us for answers as our world becomes more fragmented by the day? Why would we expect them to? Think about how this all must be so disjointed for the millennials and the Gen Xers and the Gen Zs and anybody else who has not spent a lifetime in the church. 
people who don't know Jesus, people who have never picked up a Bible, but who are searching. In the course of one day, one single day, pick a news channel, any news channel, and you can hear any number of what are called, named, and claimed Christian views. But so many of them have absolutely nothing to do with, with the teachings of Jesus. But here's the good news. The good news is that's where we come in. We are the light. We are the sharers of the good news. We have to rise above the fray and love our neighbors. Paul tells us that we're here to preach the gospel. We're here to share God's stories simply, effectively, and with love. That message that message is, is one of unity and humility. And he reminds us that power and salvation can only come through the message of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's rise and sing together our hymn of the day, hymn 798, Will You Come and Follow Me? Together, let us profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all in need. Build us up, Mother in God, as living stones united in your spiritual house. Continually strengthen your church as it is sent forth to proclaim your love. We pray especially for new congregations and those in redevelopment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Humble us, Creator God, as part of your creation. Fill us with respect and awe for the world you have made, including volcanoes, ocean currents, tropical rainstorms, glaciers, and other forces that, have bo that both destroy and create. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. Align our ways to your love, O God. We pray for countries, leaders, and other organizations as they prepare places for those seeking refuge and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear Amen. our prayer. God of healing and rest, help those whose hearts are heavy and weighed down by many troubles. Comfort their suffering, ease their distress, and carry their burdens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, we pray for those who tend and teach young children, for the safe pregnancies of expectant parents, and for families who struggle with infertility and miscarriage. We give thanks for all who have shown mothering care, and we remember all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For what else do the people of God pray? Lord God, we pray, of course, for all those mothers who are maybe not being celebrated as much as they should be on this Mother's Day in the midst of pandemic and isolation. Lift up their hearts, give them encouragement, and remember that love from afar is still love indeed. And God, we ask for healing for JoLynn and Linda and for Darla. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Generous God, you call into your brilliant light all who have died. Give us faith to take hold of the promise of your eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have uh, just a few announcements this morning. Uh, the first announcement, of course, is uh, for our newsletter that went out this last week. For those of you who maybe didn't receive it by email, it's because you aren't on the email list to receive the newsletters. All you have to do to get on that list is call in the church and we'll put you on there, no problem. So if you didn't receive it via, via electronic means or in the mail and you'd like to receive it in the mail, just call the office here at the church and we can get you on either or both lists. Um, if you're in the neighborhood, we do have some printed out, and you're welcome to come grab one, too. Just please remember to practice good social distancing. Um, also, a reminder for all of our council members, we will be having a council meeting tomorrow night. That will be via Zoom, so keep an eye out for the link or the phone number if you need to call in. Um, I think that's all the announcements we have. Do you have one or two? Come on up, Patty. I just have one. Mm -hmm. But it's a big one. So we want everyone to know that um, on the Hermiston and the Pendleton United Methodist Church websites, every Wednesday evening will be posted Wednesday um, prayer meeting, and it's a lot of good old gospel music and prayer, and um, and we're just getting it started. So come join us, watching. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Now our service continues with the Great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you.
celebration of the word. Praise to you. Thank you.
Christ is risen, just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Now, if at home you want to join us for our postlude, it's hymn 763, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. Thank you. 